see you guys. Nice to be here. Well, you know, it's not until the snow comes. No, no, my wife over here. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting for Tuesday, February 6, 2018 at 6 30 p.m. My name is Jeff. My name is Jeff Palumbo. That's right. My name is Scott Bugby. To my right is Jeff Palumbo. To my left is Jim Lehan. And to Jim's left is Jack Hathaway, our town administrator. And to Jack's left is uh, Suzanne Jacobson, uh, our executive assistant fill in. And over on the right is Bob Bullock, our building commissioner. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And our town attorney, Dave DeLuca. Uh, I just want to advise people this meeting is being audio and videotaped consistent with the open meeting laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and will be rebroadcast on NCTV's government channel and uploaded online to YouTube. We will now stare, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I cannot speak tonight. <laughs> I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. Thank you. Sorry for my stumbling, <laughs> folks. I'm out of practice. Um, we're now going to uh, move to go into executive session to discuss, to discuss strategy with respect to litigation. Uh, Commandell versus Town of Norfolk et al. And, to reconvene, and we will reconvene in open session. The chair declares. Uh, I'll take a roll call vote, please. Scott Pugby, aye. Jeff Palumbo, aye. Jim Lehan, aye. aye. Thank you. And we will be back in open session once we finish. Oh, good evening. Thank you, folks. Welcome back to uh, open session. At this time, we're running a little bit late. I would like to open the public hearing for the, for the water rate hearing. Do I have any motion for that or anything? Or just uh, I so moved. <laughs> Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we'll put that off for a bit because we have a, joining us right now is Bob McGee. Our building commission is going to talk to us about permit fees. This is going to be Bob Bullock. Mr. Bullock. That's all right. Oh, yeah, sorry. I get it. Hey, Mr. Bullock. Bob, <laughs> Mr. Bosnan, sorry. It hasn't been a long evening yet. Well, um, we're in the process of changing our building software program over to um, Citizen Serve. Uh, it's a new program that's going to incorporate all the different departments in the town hall um, into one program. And with that, we're looking at our permit fees, which we haven't changed in quite a while, and uh, wanted to review them and consider somewhat what we did with the electrical permit fees uh, about a year ago and kind of look at each one and, um, and reevaluate that. So that's pretty much what I did um, and kind of based it on how much time uh, each permit would take for uh, the inspection department to look, to review the plans, to go out and do the inspections, uh, and took that into account for the minimum permit fees and the different fee structures. The other aspect of this which is um, the International Code Council, which is what the, um, the codes are all built from. Uh, they put the codes together, the state adopts those codes, they, um, they amend them to a certain degree, so they have an amendment with each package of a new uh, code cycle, which we, January 1st, we went into the ninth edition of the building code. Uh, with this new software, they have the ability to tie into the International Code Council that does a, um, a building construction cost uh, valuation data that they do based on the type of construction. So they take that number and every six months they update those numbers and they give you an average number based on the type of construction. Since I've been here since 2001, um, when I first started, I had two identical houses that were being permitted and one contractor said it cost $400,000 to build, and the other one said it cost $200,000 to build. So instead of you know, uh, penalizing the, the guy that you know, was the higher number, and um, I came up with a construction cost of, at the time, about $80 a square foot, um, for the, uh, which was on the lower side, but felt it was fair at the time. Here we are almost 17 years later, and um, we're still using the same numbers. And the codes changed dramatically, the cost of constructions changed dramatically, um, and trying to always having to figure this out based on, um, you know, taking plans in, doing the, uh, <clears throat> doing the um, square foot cost and the uh, running these numbers takes time to do it. 
where this program you put in the square footage of you know the um, the house the garage the porch the decks and it figures it all out automatically which um, so then you know we do a, a, a permit fee of eleven dollars per thousand for a residential um, I would suggest based on the numbers that are being used now that the board could consider lowering that number to nine dollars per thousand it would still increase the permit fee cost but it wouldn't be uh, as substantial as it is today but you don't have that in the new permit fee column though, right? no I just kind of put what we have today and you know put that out there to say you know this is something that you could leave the way it is at eleven dollars per thousand it is going to be you know a, a fairly decent increase though um, that you're going to get some pushback or I'm going to get pushback on but um, so I thought it you know looking at it um, that it may be worthwhile to uh, to lower that number uh, to something around nine dollars um, I, I did do a couple um, just like a 2,000 square foot house versus a um, uh, the construction costs the difference is um, uh, approximately $800 difference between what we're charging today on a 2,000 square foot house compared to what the ICC says it costs and I, I know the ICC numbers for new construction is $116 and 15 cents per square foot I don't think that's really unreasonable actually and you know considering what I know of construction costs today um, but you know these are the things that we use to come up with a construction the uh, permit fees and um, they've designed this you know for um, you know um, building departments across the country to be able to utilize this system just to make it easier on them so um, the software you know actually is um, embedded this would be embedded in the software so it would actually do it automatically so when you say it's an $800 difference what is like what what to what like um, it's 800 to 1600 or is it the or 2,000 square foot house based on the ICC system the permit fee is $2,555 based on the way that we've been doing it today uh, the permit fee is $1,760 okay. so and if yeah, we went to nine, it would be. It would be two thousand ninety. So. <coughs> okay. Mr. Planning Board. Yeah, this may not be so easy to do, but um, if you went back and pulled, um, whether it's three months of permits or some period of time, and used the algorithm and compared the fees collected under the two scenarios, I mean, if you've done any of that, just to try to see. It would be a lot of work. Just to, to check. Do it. Yeah. 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 You want to check what to yeah. see if that'll be higher, or just, just to see if, in fact, it gets us to where we want to be and need to be in terms of you know covering expenses, but not really you know, going beyond that in terms of what mm -hmm. we're trying to accomplish. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, like like anything, uh, we can implement these parameters and uh, continue to evaluate and if for some reason we think that some of the metrics can be you know some of them can be reduced um, we could always do that mm -hmm. uh, I'm not suggesting that that's going to play out that way but it's possible yeah I mean the difference you know from when 2001 and today uh, this past year we've doubled the amount of building permits alone never mind the electrical plumbing and gas yeah. but um, you know, the substantial um, rise in the construction. So that's going to skew the number, you know, because there's, there's years that, you know, um, you know <coughs> I don't know if any year is actually paid for the building department completely based on, you know, when you look at all the expenses that are related to the building department. But, you know, um, years that we have 500 plus uh, permits just in building alone is, um, you know, that's going to be that's going to pay for most of the building department uh, expenses. But you know, when you look at the cars that we use right. and yeah, the office a lot of space, and, too, yeah. and then the um, the salaries and um, expenses, exactly. it's significant. So, I, mean, I like the fact that you don't have to like argue with people. You know, it doesn't seem arbitrary. You know, you 
you know, would have a system in place that is much easier in my mind to defend. So this is, you know, I, building this is software uses the code they use. It's pretty standard. Mm -hmm. Whether it's the nine dollars, eleven dollars, I'm, I'm open on that. So hand, you run all the numbers. What do we got? Um, but he's got a calculator for Bob the past three months. Yeah. Well, uh, Bob, I, I don't want to bore everybody with going through all of these numbers, but it, it's hard for me. I, I just want our fees to be reasonable compared to other communities. And the part that concerns me is we don't have enough data to judge that, at least on this sheet. And I know it's hard to comply, but uh, to, to get it. But uh, as I was kidding with you earlier. We all need, need to move to Medfield because there are no permitting fees down here for Medfield. Clearly, there are. We just don't know what those numbers are. Um, so, uh, do you need? I mean, I, I would like to see that. Um, just, just, I'm picking some off the charts here, but I mean, we're, there are some areas where we're substantially higher than numbers that are here, but they're not complete. Can, is it possible to get good data of what other town? I mean, this has to be on their web pages, I would think, wouldn't be? Mm, not always. <coughs> I actually had one of the um, women in my office go through this and try to, um, you know, call these different towns and try to get the information. And, it, um, you know, it's just not every town has the exact same um, categories that, you know, right. each and town I, has. I know, so I know we've gone through this before and yeah. you, you, uh, so you're trying to get to apples and oranges on sometimes. That. Yeah. So. Does it make sense well, to do the three I, I, I don't know how tri towns as we I don't know how to judge family. it then. Yeah. Uh, that's my problem, Bob. I, I mean, I don't know whether $9 or $11. I'm, I'm not a, a builder, so I, I don't know whether that's fair or unfair. <coughs> but if I look over at Rentham and I see that we're 50% higher, and that's not the case, but if I were to look at Rentham and say it's 50% higher, that to me is unfair. A and I have no way of judging that because I don't have the data. Mm -hmm. What can we have? Can we help? I mean, this is an exhaustive list of towns. I mean, do we want to well, now focus on three towns? I mean, I, I would focus just on, on our neighbors. I mean, you know. But there's a lot of neighbors. I mean, we, you know, well, you know, but Medfield, Rentham. Um, you have Franklin, you have Plainville, you have Foxborough. That's asking a lot. I mean, and Millis. Look, look at towns that are similar in kind. Rentham is similar in kind. Uh, Medfield is similar in kind. Uh, maybe even just those two towns would, would be helpful yeah. for me. I mean, uh, you know, we don't need. Holliston or Hoffington or um, um, I don't know Millis perhaps Who's I mean you have good data here on Millis huh Medway Medway yeah so would they are they trying to get into the same format as us they are so I mean Needham and Canton you know that no, I mean, I don't care well, about that, and but Needham was supposed to be taken off of this so. I mean don't don't you think we should be at least I mean, we don't have to be a boilerplate, you know, town. We don't have to be exactly what Rentham is, but there needs to be a reason why we would be substantially higher than another town that well, was similar to our town. And, you know, I just look at it that, you know, we want to try to meet the costs, and that's, I, it, you know what, if the town wants to leave it the way that it is, I don't have a problem with it. I just, I'm just looking at it that, you know, when you go out to do, let's say, a solar, and it's we get a $50 permit fee, but, you know, we're spending an hour, you know, reviewing the plans, you know, going out there to do a pre-inspection to make sure that the rafters can handle the load, the roof load. Right. And then we're going out there to check the brackets, and then we're doing a final inspection. Each one of those times that yep. the, Agreed. the inspectors are yep. going out there, you know, you could roughly say that it's going to cost the town probably $50 anyways. Um, or more for each trip for each trip yeah. and yeah. you know when we're only getting fifty dollars and it's costing us two hundred two fifty or if we find something wrong and we're going back there again you know these are the things that happen so I'm just looking at it in that respect and kind of like with the electrical permit fees you know we tried to count how many inspections we would have to do on each one of those inspections and that's how we came up with the permit fee you know, right, I remember they, they told they us that because again you go on four times so right. if it's 50 the first time maybe 25, so, but, 25 but in some instances it. you go four in other instances you go two <clears throat> generally well and for the most part when we figured those fees those are pretty much um, mandatory inspections that we would do you know based on that particular category so um, there are times when we go out there you know there's generally when we do a, a building inspection, 
and we fail it because there's something that's wrong. Um, we don't charge them to go out there the next time. But when we go out there the third time, we charge them a reinspection mm -hmm. fee. And, you know, I know that, you know, we look at it, and if it's not right, we call them out on it. And, you know, so I, to me, we all make mistakes. Go ahead and fix it, and then we'll come back out. If you, if you still haven't fixed it properly or, you know, completed the list or whatever it was, then um, I think well, it's that, reasonable that's to charge them. That's again. fair. That, that's that's so, on them, not on so us. When I did these uh, these fees, I tried to look at what are the mandatory inspections, not going beyond that. Even though we, most of these will end up going out there again. You know, I'm not. I shouldn't say most of the time because not everybody fails every time. You know, but um, you know there are. I can say that right. there's usually a punch list. So Bob's friend, like your friends, just take the gas and just buy them because you go. You ask for forty-five to hundred. <coughs> so you figure you go out there at least twice. Is that the uh, on the gas inspection, yeah. I'm just getting, yeah. it's just the cost of what we're actually spending, you know, for the inspector, the mileage for them to go out there, and um, you know, what happens if he goes out there twice too, so, you know, um, but um, uh, under commercial, a first fixture would mean the first gas driven item that's in the commercial building whether it be a furnace or whatever yep okay and this is kind of the system that they've had in town for forever um, I mean, Jack do you have any comment uh, yeah as Bob said I know it's not you know looking when we you know the soft costs and the hard costs roughly you know the, uh, currently our fees you know, I know it has booms and busts on the, you know, because we have that as a line item about permit fees and stuff. Or would you say? Yeah, I mean, every time we've looked at it, we've, we've never, you know, because we always look at, particularly the building department, and make sure that we're, um, we're not, uh, we're not generating revenue. Right. So, is that when? Um, no, right. I mean, whatever. It, right. Um, so every time we, and I, I haven't looked at it in 18 months or so, but uh, Todd probably has. But every time I've looked at it before that, we've never. We've never been able to cover our costs. Um, I mean, none of these are exorbitant increases. I, I mean, I'm, mm. I, so I, I don't have an issue with with um, with the amounts per se. I just, I just, I guess I'm just more curious that we're in line with, or at least not overly excessive compared to some of our neighbors. That's all. But um, and you do have some, you know, some of the data is here. Um, you do have some, yeah, you know, you've got some good data on Rentham or some data on Rentham, which certainly is comparable to ours. So, what do you, you, so what, 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 yeah, what do you guys want to do? I mean, I'm, I mean Bob doesn't, you know, it's, it's, I think it's a <coughs> decent amount of work to try to get some of that data. Or I mean, I can try to, um, you know, force it a little bit more and, you know, call these guys and, you know, try to fill in some of these, these holes on this. Um, <coughs> I would just do Rentham, Medfield, and Millis. But it's not Plainville, though? I mean, what? Well, Plainville's not on here, but. I don't know. I just looked it up. Uh, we, yeah, we, we call ourselves If you could towns, do those three towns, here. and and I agree with you, by the way, on the nine versus the 11. I would rather see the nine than the 11. That's just. If, if you think that covers your costs. Mm hmm. So you got the was, towns that won't bother, we can come back to this then? So. Yeah, Rentham, Medfield, and Millis. Maybe. Chairman was suggesting. Well, I just talk again. We call ourselves a yeah, time. I mean, why would you want to? I mean, I only. Oh, Plainville too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, that's, I mean, the only thing, is, you know, not to throw mud on it, but I mean, you know, while we compare ourselves, these times because we're somewhat comparable. Don't forget, each one has a much bigger element of commercial property than us, so they get more money in the commercial. So we're really not comparing apples to apples, even when we look at all those things that you asked for. Mm -hmm. Because they get, you know, what I mean, they don't rely as much on the residential building per se as a rent and putting out that big thing on Madison Street. They could they could give away the residential side and cover their yep. so it's not really Very true. So we got to be careful when yeah. you look at that number. What do you really compare? And yep. I don't want to make it more complicated for Bob, but it almost be that that dreaded wealth factor. No, that's a good commercial point. Commercial versus I mean, residential. With, uh, every every one of those towns has a higher percentage of commercial than yeah, we, we do. Have the lowest so. on there. So. Yeah, so that's a good point. That's more work, Bob. You got that? You got what you need to do. Was that helpful? Yeah. Okay. Anything else for Bob? Oh, Jack. So okay. you need a decision. Could we? Can you wait for the next meeting for a decision on this? Yep. Uh, when's the next meeting? Two a couple weeks. weeks. Yeah, we can wait for that. that. Okay. Yep. I just yes, wonder if you could do, 
like a like your two thousand square foot house, just do that here and do that and rent them and see what. Oh, that'd be a good way to do it. Okay, wonderful idea. Thank you, Bob, for staying. Bob likes to give me things to do, so. Hey, right, that's fair. Sorry to keep you so. Bob, late, thanks Bob. for your hard work on this. I, I know you've done a lot the of the team. Team, whoever's had the call, because you're right. It would be nice if it was all on a website or we had an intern or something like that doing it for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, <laughs> Our flock of interns, yeah. Flock, well, no, because they have to call. I mean, they have to give it to you. I assume if you call, they have to answer. It. But maybe not in the same category, right? That's the problem too. Some of them could have been filled in, which um, I don't know why they weren't, but. You know, honestly, it's been pretty busy just because of the, um, the staffing lately and the amount of construction that's going on. So um, I haven't had, I haven't been able to spend much time with this. To give that task off. So well, you got this weekend coming up, so feel free to do it then. <laughs> we appreciate that. All right. Thanks, Thank Bob. You. How's your new inspector Bob. working out? So far, so good. So far, so good. Good. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, so, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Good night, Bob. Mr. McGee, you want to join us on the hot seat? Sure. All right. Water rate hearing. Hey, Robert. Good evening. How you doing? Good, thanks. Another storm coming, huh? Another storm tomorrow, yeah. Nice. I don't know. A few inches. Good. This has it's been, been a too pretty bad. decent year. It's been a bad year. You're right. They're dead. Yep. They're dead. Okay. Worried about the... Maybe the, the commute home for the kids tomorrow. That's mm -hmm. about it. Feeling better? It was that for me? It was my kid. Hmm? Health-wise? The son. Your boy. Feeling better? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yep. Thank you for asking. Okay. Well, I'm hoping you have a handout there. The, uh, yeah. one the recommendations, recommendations yeah. for yeah. Yeah. both this water this and solid waste. This is a tough one. Yeah. So, uh... Put a little background behind it for, for the water rates. We're uh, recommending that we do not increase the water rates for FY19. Um, we haven't raised the water rates since 2011. I think you know the story behind it, but for those that don't, we've um, pretty much cleaned up a, a leaky situation in this town some five years ago. We have 5% uh, or less unaccounted for water. I don't know if that um, contributes. I think it does to our good luck, but we haven't had any emergencies that cost us a lot of money. Um, each year, our budget that you approve, we managed to give back a, a good chunk of it because a lot of it has uh, precautionary lines in it for, like, uh, you know, unforeseen expenses, uh, special projects. So as a result of that, we've been able to um, save some money in our retained earnings. We have uh, under a million dollars now, I think, certified at 800 and something thousand dollars. So as far as water rates go, maybe next year, because um, we do, as you know, have uh, a new well under development. And we can, you know, if, if there's time tonight, if not another time, discuss uh, where we are with that. <coughs> so that's it for the water rates. Secondly, I don't know how you'd vote this, fellas, but uh, secondly is the- uh, Vote them individually? You can vote them either way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I, well, I want to see if anyone in the public. Right. Anyone has any comments? Yeah. Well, secondly is the uh, solid waste. Solid waste. Now, solid waste is that uh, we're we're um, recommending that the boat do not Im increase any of the uh, fees for FY19 for solid waste. But you should know that um, it's not a real success story there, only because of the recycling markets. So I wrote down here for you to read the recycling markets that have have had a negative effect on our revenues over the last couple of years and they don't look to rebound right away. Um, on a positive side, we continue to keep recycling out of our waste stream, which of course reduces the waste uh, weight by which we pay for uh, MSW tipping fees. But more importantly, um, we're recycling and we're doing our, our duty to keep recycling out of the waste stream. But just for instance, you know, and I, I don't have it to the penny, but like maybe three years ago, we operated an entire division minus $6,000. So, for instance, if, if our budget was $100,000, our expenses were like 94000 we lost like 6000 That covers salaries, that covers trucking, that covers all the different things. And that's not bad for a service to this town to have a transfer station that um, with a six, uh, sticker fee of uh, $65 a year, which I think... I, I think you can get down the Cape and probably 
see that they're paying 200 and even locally they're paying at least 100 somewhere maybe a medfield or something like that but somewhere along the line they're getting their money um, to subsidize the division but so that's it for both water and uh, solid waste the only other thing that we have as um, semi enterprise would be the uh, cemeteries and when you know I didn't bring that up that's there's no um, recommendation for fee increases there is either so questions on those two recommendations Mm -hmm. Any folks out there? Any, <laughs> Ribbit, yes, just identify yourself, please. Sandra Meyer, Eric Rose. Uh, Do you have the microphone too? Yeah. Well, just I was just wanted to cover. We can get the well development sec. Sorry, just because we need to vote on the water rate recommendations all the way. Even even though I'm not changing, we just have to have, we just have to take a vote. So I didn't know if you had a question about those two items first. Well, the, just to answer your question, the well that's being talked about is on Holbrook Street, up on the Millis line. Was that the question? I think so. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Yeah, I just, I just figured. We get, uh, any other questions? Do I have a motion to approve the recommendation of no increase for the water rate and the solid waste fees? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Uh, move to. I'll, I'll, I'll motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Jack. Aye. Right, talk. Give them the executive version of the. Yeah, well, 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 maybe to answer your question, the new well site um, that we're proposing and we have some investment into to date is up on Holbrook Street. Um, we had a meeting, Jack and I, and on Friday, Jack came in on his own time and it was the only time we could get these people together uh, to discuss where we are. Um, I have a handout here, but I know what we're running behind and this is, you know, you looking at it for 15 minutes trying to figure it out so you know if you want it I, I have it but just to give you a quick version everything is going great I think that's, um, a, good, that's a good thing to have. that's a good way to start well we're on thank you for the great report yeah yep. see you later <laughs> it seems to be a but there's no. not a but there is there no no, okay. no. <coughs> uh, but it's not giving us a million gallons a day it's only it but it will produce we're going to permit for I think 288,000 something like that gallons per day which is fairly equivalent to what we have with our two other well sites right now so it's a good addition to our our water source and um, it also well, lets you know our other sites sleep for a while you know instead of using two sites to get the, the the water we need for this town now we have three to choose from so you know it's a uh, and the it's going is good. on schedule the permit is going real good if there is one obstacles outside of our family of uh, of uh, you know the consultants in the DEP which are we're going great is uh, the Charles River Watershed Association has a, a comments period because we're draining from the, you know the Charles River Basin um, we don't anticipate anything um, Jack unless you know of something we no, just DEP seemed they, they said the, the Charles River will, will comment but they don't think they'll because we're not looking for an addition to our, our withdrawal where this is a redundant well um, they think they'll comment but it, it should be should they go through known about it for a long time and there's no uh, scuttlebutt or anything like that going around that uh, that I can bring back to you you know so hopefully that, uh, that'll go good we will have a request at the springtime meeting just for the the rest of the construction funds uh, which will be through the water department yep well, thank you that's it unless you have questions for water okay. thanks, Bob. thanks Bob. Bob. thank you thank you all right thank you Thank you. Do we want to go we to, do. since we've got folks here, we do. we're going to go to Mr. McCarthy, uh, uh, Lawrence Street Bridge. We've got an update uh, there. Rich, you do. Good night. Thank you. I just got to get my computer going. I forgot. I should probably go to stand. Whatever makes you comfortable. I don't know if they can hear. Um, I'll get them one. Okay, yeah. Hey, Bob. Thank you. Okay. Make sure nobody breaks. And it's comfy too. Yeah. Don't look like it's lighting up yet. Uh, Do you want me to hit the lights? Yeah, the lights might be good. Good point. I'm short. Uh oh. Oh yeah. You want to watch the football game? No. My Dan, my, well, my Dan, <laughs> my Dan is going to stay. Yeah. Saw that? That gets better. What? Josh McDaniels. He's not leaving. That's what, what was it said? Yeah, that's what it said. He's yeah. not leaving? No. He didn't take the Colts job? No, he spurned him. 
That's what? what? I was just breaking news right there. Josh, yeah, no, seriously, Josh McDaniel is not taking the job. You're lying. You're, it just yeah, it was on the end. It just said that. Yeah, that's what wow. He's not taking it. Now we're speculating Bill Belichick wow. might be going, but that, that's not, not important. Well, after Sunday, I'm okay with that. But anyways, <laughs> yeah. Well, this is like another Parcells Belichick type well, this, thing. This, this uh, soap opera doesn't want to stop, does it? Uh, Daniel's Belichick. Breaking up. Okay. All right, everything from this point yeah. on is a letdown after that news. Go ahead. Oh, my gosh, he did at the last minute. So I can't top that. No, I kidding. Uh. Breaking news on Norfolk Breaking TV. News, huh? <laughs> Will cause all right. kinds of speculation, won't it? That's already out there. Oh, I know. What's your opinion on it? <laughs> <laughs> good. I'm excited. <laughs> I was okay with the offense on Sunday, and it's the defense. Uh, sorry. Jeez. <laughs> Boy, one right, well, Super Bowl. We're going to uh, connect right away. Huh? Are you trying to get over the computer jack part of it? or is So we do, we do have a PowerPoint presentation. That will go along as far as give the update to the board regarding the Mass Works project for Lawrence Street. Yeah. Um, oh, there we go. There were uh, a few items that we want to just talk about tonight, just briefly update um, the board and the community at large. The causeway, the bridge uh, project impact and schedule. Um, I think when the Bill Scully was here from Green International last meeting with the board, some of the, the um, plans were a little bit challenging as far as to get a sense of what was going on because they're more engineering related details. So what we tried to do was take some of the things in there and give some examples of what, what they're proposing as far as what it's going to look and feel like. So that's part of what the, we want to do tonight in clarification of some of those items. You want to go to the next Unpreferable to my slide versus his. He's kind of covering up the spots, but that's just the scope of the area, uh, the beginning, um, and the end point is about here. So if you know, if you're out on Lawrence Street, look at the, uh, the overhead utility line. It kind of is an angle. It's just before that, towards uh, Park Street, on the end towards Lawrence Street. Next slide, please. I thought that was good. So there's the start. And this is one of the engineering plans that starts down a park, park, uh, park Street. Excuse me. You want to open next slide. The sidewalk, the sidewalk will be going right. Yeah, there. so the sidewalks on this side is coming down, and then it goes the bridge, and then there the, uh, which I'll call the boardwalk. Uh, there is a, a rendering of it, what's being proposed, to give people an idea of what it looks like. Um, so we'll get to that one next. We can go back if we need to, but I just want to go to. So Rich, a couple of things that would help um, to clarify for folks. For example, the sidewalk, there was an issue whether it was going to be on the north side or the south side. Some people, it's going to be on the north side. Um, and, and the reason for that is, is in discussions with conservation, there is room on the north side to widen the road and to do this construction without in any way going into the pond. There is not room on the south side to do that. So if the sidewalk were to go on the south side, we would have to go into the pond, which would get into a significant amount of conservation issues, and that's not an option for us. So it will be on the north side. Thank you. Mention that point. Um, so, uh, so to get an idea, this is the cross section of the of the bridge, and one of the things that came up was as far as the so the sidewalk is going to be attached to the bridge, and then it's going to be attached to the sheer. Um, the pile wall that so it's going to be cantilevered out on the north side over uh, the pond, and one of the things that th there was a uh, people were questioning the last meeting was the potential as far as you know from the sidewalk to the road as far as maybe people tripping and going out into uh, Lawrence Street, and so what uh, I want to try to show you here and well there's another picture to get a better idea of it is here's the sidewalk here which is actually the boardwalk, but then there's a nine inches to the top of this concrete cap that's 21 inches wide, which is going to be next to the sidewalk. And then on top of that, and I'll show, there's a picture of what they're doing, is there'll be a guardrail that goes along top of the concrete cap. So essentially, from the, the walk, there's 22 inches to the street side. So you're not just 
there's there's 22 inches this way and there's 21 inches that way. So to, you know, it kind of deals with potential. You know, if people were to slip or fall into the travel way, it should minimize that. And there's a picture that shows it. It's not. Nor if I could similar application near Boston, but you'll get a picture of it so we, we can go back to that. Um, this boardwalk here will be um, a composite material like a Trex or some comparable thing. That's the surface it's going to be. Just like you would do with decking, it's just going to be a higher, higher grade um, to last longer. And also, um, one of the things we specified, which will be in the specifications, is that we'll make sure that it's quality whereby the coloring goes through it so it lasts for a longer period of time. And that would be the, the flooring. And then here, there'll be a, a railing to the pond side, which is going to be four feet, two inches high. Um, and then we'll get to, a, we'll sh I'll show you a picture, but basically, there'll be the railing, there'll be spindles. So it's going to be, you're not going to be able to go between that railing and fall into the pond. Um, so it'll be similar to what you would have on a deck, you know, the type of railing there. And then this little, do you want to go to the next one, please? I'm happy to. Please? All right, so just picture this, just gives you a general idea. Obviously, um, we would not be doing this type of railing here. You'll, we'll get a picture of the railing, but if you can see, Here's the roadway. There's a curb that comes up, and then there's this rail that goes along the top of it. That's what they're proposing on the street side, as far as so it's you're not in you're, you don't have a railing that's four feet high here. The walkway is another, another railing. That's what they're proposing right now, and essentially that's where I say it's the 22 inches of height that you get from the street up to the top of that, and then the sidewalk, the width across is going to be five and a half feet. Next slide. So just kind of recaps a little things. Like we said, the north side was chosen because there's room to put to extend the roadway, cantilever leave the sidewalk, <coughs> minimize the impact, not filling in the pond. Again, that was important consi consideration. As was discussed last meeting, it's a 24 foot road, two 10 foot travel lanes, two foot shoulders, and there's a sheet uh, pile retaining walls there. One of the next slide. So this gives you a little bit better idea. So on the south side, this here, we're looking to have a, a wooden garden rail, so it has more of a country feel to it, as it put the typical metal guard rail that doesn't quite have that aesthetic value. That's what we're looking to do. This is reinforced on the back side, so it is structurally meets standards to prevent a vehicle from going through it. So it is reinforced. This gives you the idea, just as picture this, take away that railing uh, here, but this is the decking, the railing to that side. It gives you a visual of uh, what's being proposed. Next slide. And that's uh, the end of it. Where we are, and we can you know go back, but as far as where we are in the process, the notice of intent was <coughs> filed with the Conservation Commission. Public hearing is scheduled for, uh, unfortunately for some, Valentine's Day, <laughs> um, which is February 14th. If you can't remember, but um, so that in there is the in that submission right now. They have 50% design plans in there. I do know if you go look at the plans, they do need to make updates to the plan because the cross section that I showed you where the uh, walkway is lower. Not even with the top cap. I did, you know, made note of that to the engineers. They got to update those plans that are in there. Um, we did meet with the engineering company who's doing the work, um, and we do need to two things. Obviously, we need to go through the permitting process with the conservation commission. We're going through estimating as far as the construction costs goes, and looking at the different options that need to be considered. So the things that we showed you. On the screen, as far as that railing type, that's a potential choice. They need to price that out. They originally didn't price it with that type of railing, which is more of the wooden one, which I think is preferable the most. Um, the um, other thing that they're working on is we did talk about the last <coughs> meeting is having the utilities just take the lines overhead and remove them. So there's a couple of ways where 
discussions with both of us here, but we're talking about accomplishing that. Um, we're having the engineers evaluate actually going through the roadway. They want they were considering hanging them, but we're thinking going through the you know, a trench. It's called a duck bank where all the different utilities are in. So that's that's in consideration um, right now. The um, at least the initial thought with the construction. I don't know if you want to talk about the. Um, yeah, could you go to the picture in the beginning on the road, the whole road? No. There. Yeah. Um, the underground. You they are going to put it conduits under the bridge for underground utilities. It's still debated whether they'll be actually under the ground or whether they'll <coughs> be strapped to the walkway underneath. Um, but if you look where it says beginning of project. Uh, Mr. McGee had a, a great idea, well, personal bias, I thought it was a great idea. There's a lot of curb area there, and I guess it would require um, amending the filing before the Conservation Board because it's within the 100-foot buffer. But, Bob, you want to describe what you described to us about how you, because it would, I think, this is a personal view, I think those trucks coming down Lawrence Street have to go right. Period. <laughs> Not left. They so have to go right. They're, 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 you know, with or without Abbeville. Uh, there will be big trucks doing, bringing in girders and uh, a lot of concrete and things of that nature for this bridge work. Well, I'm going to pass this around, Joe. Okay. So yeah. they can see it because we know. It's in a market. Yeah, I think it's a couple of different views of it. Yeah, so one of the... There's a way that we could... One of the, the things in discussion with the engineers last week was um, specifying the routing of trucks as far as this project goes. And that's where this piece that Jim is talking about now is to have them to come out Lawrence Street, they gotta go right onto Park Street, and not head left. So that's one of the things that we wanna have uh, specified within the scope of the work, of the construction. Scope of which part? <laughs> scope of the bridge part? The bridge, yep. We're, right, for tonight we're just talking about the bridge, so. Um, that's what we want to have. Could, could that be a discussion for the ZBA? The answer is yes. That could be. So but our scope is just the bridge. Is that restriction transferable to another discussion? I'm sure it certainly is. Yeah. Microphone, do you have a, a yep. name, address, please? Uh, uh, my name is David Mastro, 26 Lawrence Street. I like the idea that you've widened that on your picture to the right. The only thing is, I, when I go to work in the morning, most people are taking a left. They're going up toward Main Street, going toward the train station, and going that way toward Boston. I'm just going to be honest. And I, I know we're not talking about Abbeville, but you have to in a sense because every, all the trucks are going toward Main Street. If you could do that to both sides of the street to open it up, to make it wider that way, especially if, you know, when people are coming down and in, because um, as the police chief told me in a story that if you look at Park Street, there's a dip in it, and they had filled that in a long time ago. There's, a, there's still a dip where you can lose sight of a car, and when you're coming down, that people fly down, and that it makes it easier if you can make that right-hand turn a lot easier because sometimes people don't stop. And in the traffic study, the one accident that went left into uh, Lawrence Street was actually my wife got hit in the back. So, I mean, people fly on that road, so if you open it up on both ways, I think you're gonna make it safer for people turning from both directions. I think that will cut down on the accidents. It's just, I mean, just for public safety. That's what I'm just talking about. So, I, I like the idea, that was a great idea of bringing it, cause, so you can go right, but I think left also, so when people turn right onto Lawrence, it'll make it a lot easier. Can I go ahead? What we were thinking about was, Jack, is there any chance you can get us through that um, to the drawing that shows that turn off. I mean, you can't go to Street Google or anything, right? But I could. Here it is here. Can you blow that up? I think you can magnify this. So you all, you all know that uh, right now this exists. That's Park Street, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? So what we were thinking about, there's going to be quite a bit of trucking uh, filled with gravel. And these trucks would come down here, and they'd get to this point here. If you take a left here, Cars will always be able to go there. But if you take a left here, you're at a, 
a truck at a standstill, it's going to be downshifting. It's going to, you know, it's going to make that noise pollution and stuff and take a left and go into our town, which really, if they could just come down here, and if you look at that picture, you'll see as you're coming down here, the grade tilts a little bit here. It's almost level to tilting down. So the truck can really come down here without going to that stop sign. And maybe, you know, the, whether this is an easy construction to join this road up. It was once joined up before the Park Street. So the truck could come out here and just take a right and go up to 140, where really all the, uh, well, the plant material is that it's going to anyways, like on 140, which is built for trucks and heavy traffic. So we thought that would be a great relief to these neighbors and anybody else that had to listen to that or get that puff of smoke or, or whatever. This would be the best. Right. And it's and down, be and optional it's downhill. For, excuse me? And it's downhill. Right. If you look at the picture, like I said, Tilt you'll see that road. Park Street is tilting downhill. Tilt the road's there. The road's already there. Oh, okay. This is the town's layout. Right. Yeah. Oh, just go right yeah. <laughs> it just you have to take a few trees down, but that'd be it. You know, that's all whatever we think. You know, this here? you get an idea. I, I agree with you. I, I, so, so there's no mic here, but I, I agree with you. I think that's excellent. Yeah. That's great for safety. The only thing is that you need to talk to, to the developer because he's going left. In all his meetings with the ZBA, he's going left. He says he's going up through Main Street. Well, so. I think his message to us was he, it, it's like 50-50, unless you guys heard it different, tell me about it. But I think if we encourage them to go right, and the truck drivers themselves. <coughs> so just to, uh, to answer the gentleman's <laughs> question, so this, this would only be for the construction period. Once the construction done, that would be abandoned. Generally speaking, when you have roads, you want to intersect them at 90 degree angles. It's much safer for line of sight. So this is really just to be able to kind of help with the construction period work. That would be a ban, and you go back to the, because uh, I think you were maybe more in permanent condition. Is that what you're? I mean, it used to be that way. Yeah. So, and, and that, and the reason why that was a limp, you know abandoned was because you want to be able to intersect the road at right angles. So that that would only be during the construction period. But it could uh, be widened. Yeah, no, 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 point taken. I think yeah. you could definitely work on line of sight. And that, yeah, definitely the point taken on that. Um, so the overall, <coughs> there's going to be, it's kind of a, a mix of things that are going to happen with this project. So one is there will need to be, the road will need to be closed to do construction. So that's the kind of downside, the inconvenience to, to the neighborhood is it will... For a couple of reasons, one is the you know to to take care of the bridge. You're gonna it's a narrow bridge. It's got to be closed down to be able to remove it and then replace it. The other piece that's going to require the closures is putting that that retaining wall through here to be able to put that in there and then have the equipment and then have people operate. It needs to be shut down for a period of time. Could but I'd hate to get to help with the construction process to make it happen a little quicker, safer. Because we're still, again, we're in that little, we're kind of tight with the window. We don't have so much area to play with. And then there'll be a part of the construction process where it'll be open to travel back and forth. So as we tie that together, there's a few things that come into play. So the road does need to be closed. The things that we can think about and that the board will think about is, you know, hours. You know, there's trade-offs. You can have people work a little bit longer to make it faster, you know, um, you could have people work on a Saturday potentially if that helps. So there's things the town could do to kind of manage the, to reduce the closure, but there's some trade-offs. So that's that's part of the things that need to be discussed yet to be determined. But those things that we did talk about um, that need to be coming up decisions as far as um, with the contract before it goes out. Um, they're estimating 60 work days to do this work as far as closure related, which is. Again, I know um, that's a significant amount of time. Uh, I no, don't want to minimize that, but um, that's what they're looking at as far as closure-wise goes between the two things, the bridge and the uh, and doing the causeway. Now, the one thing that they did talk about at the last meeting, and I don't think it was really clear, and perhaps I want to just clarify, was that they're trying to target this project to get started in the summer, potentially. And, and the upside benefit to doing that is one, I know the kids would be out of school, um, which could help. Um, and then in summertime, so people, you know, hopefully take a little vacation, try to minimize it. And if the, if closures were to happen more on the front end, so when the kids go back to school, 
the bus company can work s as far as to try to minimize, you know, rerouting when the closure. So that's why, you know, we have a lot of things to address time-wise, but the overall target, if we can get some construction going in the summer, which includes road closure, hopefully that kind of minimizes disruption that we need to do with this project. So that's something that's being discussed to, to hopefully, um, but we're not, obviously, we're still in permanent with the Conservation Commission. We still got to go through, we're only 50% design plan, so they got to get those up to 100% design. Um, they have to prepare specs, put out the bid, et cetera. So there's still quite a bit of way to go before this thing is ready to put out on the street, but I wanted to just cover um, some of those topics for tonight and then you know be back obviously with additional updates but I don't know if there's any questions uh, that I might be able to answer. Do we have uh, get you an answer? Do we have anything actually in writing from the chiefs on this? They have provided testimony at the planning board hearing or the zoning board. Which what, what's the the chief, oh, the fire chief, police chief. As far as what the, of what what the bridge? What the, bri the bridge. The bridge. Okay. So to answer that question, they said in a meeting, and I think that but as far as need to close it, is that what you're asking? Well, normally just going back to, uh, I mean, planning board, board of selectmen. Sometimes certain things warrant a a document from the chiefs for mm -hmm. purposes of public safety. You know, in terms of whether they're in agreement or in agreement, but with some that's caveats, okay. this type of thing. And I just, I hadn't seen that yet, so sure. that's so why I, I asked. Well, to answer your question, I think I recommended, I talked to Jim about this and Jack, I think a subsequent meeting, the chiefs probably can come in and you can hear it from them firsthand. But I can tell you sitting in the meeting with them that um, they understand the necessity for the closure to do the work um, because it can be done more quickly, which is a positive. And what they had said as far as um, you know, the town having mutual aid agreements with the abutting towns, Rentham and mm -hmm. Franklin, that the, um, as far as response, that they would cover the area and that um, so there would be coverage when the, when the bridge was closed. And that you know, the time, the time from the station to here is not, I, I think we, we had a long meeting on this last, I think it was last week. Yeah. Um, and, and I think Rich is right, let the chiefs come in and give the detail, but all of these public safety issues were put on the table. They weren't all answered, mm -hmm. <laughs> but they were all put on the table, and, and hopefully in two weeks we'll have more of those answers and let them come from the chiefs because they're much better at that. But I, one thing I do remember was that I think the mileage difference was 4.4 versus 3.2. So it was a difference of 1.2 miles I think I've got that right, pretty sure. I, the difference I know I have right. I, it, it may have been 4.5 and 3.3, but it was a 1.2 mile differential uh, when the bridge is closed that both chiefs said was well within, they felt, an acceptable stand deviation. And um, they have already worked with uh, Franklin and Rentham where we have existing mutual aid agreements um, that uh, there are, for example, in Franklin, there's a station that's actually closer than our station even if the bridge wasn't closed, <laughs> it's actually closer. So uh, all of those things are part of what they're all working out and they can address that when they're here, I think in a couple of weeks, but that is all on the table and they're working it through. The, the one thing I think that should be addressed with that and, and brought up to, to make sure that with that mutual agreement is that they have a pump truck, like I mean a, a water do. tank. They all do. Because I thought Franklin in that area didn't have one in that area. I thought we were the ones that had it. And that's why that's that's the biggest concern for the people on Lawrence Street. There's a there, there's no hydrants. Yeah, they, they they know this. That was dis I can tell you it was discussed in the meeting. Yeah, we can we can. Yeah. We can yeah. That's why I thought you know to, to discuss it for the the best approach would be for them to come in discuss their ask because yeah right. I don't want to misleave it. For let's them, leave it to them. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. the, the thing was I was just saying is like where is their you know tank if they have a tank truck where is it located if it's and because they have several fire, you know, stations, if it's the one that's farthest away, you know, that does Lawrence Street no good. If it's the one that's the close, you know, the, the close one, okay, you know, mm -hmm. but that it's, you know, where is that one station? That's where you have to. Let's, let's leave it to I, the I'm just saying, but that's the thing. Yeah, that you no, have it's to a very process. good point. Yeah, very good point. We'll just let the folks know, answer it. <laughs> <laughs> 
I had a question. So is the bridge carrying water also? Are we installing the water line? Yes. Yes. Uh, un underneath, or how's it going to get over the waterway? The I, don't the I don't remember whether it's under the walkway or whether it's under the ground. I Bobby think it's under the bridge. Bobby answered it. Okay, okay. So the, uh, the, the water main is going to be a 12-inch main coming off Park Street. It'll be hung over the bridge, insulated, 12-inch water main, and then it goes underground. They could put it underwater, but it's more expensive, and it's an environmental thing. It's under the deck of the road. That's where they're hanging, right? On the bridge? Yeah. Under, right. So it's under the deck of the bridge, and then into the ground through the causeway. And out. When you say deck of the bridge, you're talking about the, the asphalt or the? Or the, the asphalt. The, yes. Yeah. Well, sometimes they strap it to the side or, or under the, you know, somewhere under the bridge where yeah. you'll be able to see it from yeah. side view. Um, they're designing it, and if they're going to go down the causeway, I would say the whole causeway until you get up to the neighborhood, and then it breaks off and goes to, into the subdivisions that are eight inches, never less than eight. Yep. Other questions? I Can you grab a microphone, too, because uh, some people at home can't hear your question. It's no problem. Uh, Sue Rayner, Bush Pond Road. I'm just uh, interested again on the um, from the sidewalk on the uh, crossing the bridge, where you had it come up just like nine inches, and then you have another so thirteen small. inch yeah. thing. Yep. I think the issue that Mike brought up last week is someone fishing and backing up that is still quite low that could catch you at your shin and topple over. No, it was a safety a kind of a thing. I don't know how. Can you uh, go back to the, the picture? Because you're saying the curb is nine that inches, one? and that'll only be 13. Yeah. Right. So the, That's I don't like that picture. That's still kind of low. Huh? I don't like that picture, because I don't think it, it I mean, because it doesn't show the two feet be between the railing no, I, I, and the sidewalk. Right, so you. This shows you from the roadside. On the back side, it's up again. So, you know, you it's, it's go, to, go to the cross section there. I think that's what's best. Yeah. So, you have, so there's, the, there's where your feet, you're sitting on there, you're walking on this. This is the sidewalk. And then it's nine feet to the top of that. Nine cap. inches, you mean? Nine inches. To the railing. Nine inches. You keep saying the, the cap. cap. No, to the, the cap. Oh, oh the, the cap. Concrete yeah. cap. Yeah. And there's another 12 inches to the guard It's 21 inches total. So it's 21 inches up. So it's 21 inches from the level of the sidewalk, not right. 21 inches Correct. from the, the asphalt. Right. No, no, no. 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 From the sidewalk. Yeah, it wasn't from the sidewalk. Yeah, it's easy to say it that way. What is it from the sidewalk? That's yeah. what people want to know. They don't care when it's from the road. They want to know from the sidewalk so I don't trip over backwards. This is the right. basic exactly. question people are trying to get. No, you're not, you're not going to trip over. Okay. That, well, I, that was my concern. Yeah. No, but you know what I mean? Because it was confusing. Too. Yeah, no, you're definitely not. Because it's, like I said, it's, it's 9 plus 12. And then, that, then that concrete cap is 21 inches wide, too, uh, as well. So you might not be happy if you trip it like that. Plus the plus the boardwalk is five feet five and wide. Feet wide so yeah. Five and a half feet wide. So, that's so just to go back to the the railing. <laughs> the one the picture I don't like. Yeah. No, well, it makes it look like it's no, small. The, the, oh. the boardwalk one. What the? Wooden one. Proposed one. Oh. That yeah, one? Yeah, right there. Not that I'm a super duper fisherman, but that's four feet, two inches high. It's not the greatest to fish. I mean, you can fish off it. Don't get me wrong. I've done it, but you know, you really got to be, you got to be aware of what you're doing if you're going to fish off that side. So I think you'd be pretty safe to not worry about. You have five and a half feet. You know, if you're casting over that railing. I think got five and a half feet back, you would, I think you'd be pretty comfortable. Yeah. You shouldn't have, uh, I don't think it's going to happen. So that, that back, that so back just, one would be lower. So imagine this one. This is to the yeah. roadside. Okay. That would be lower, yeah. So that would be the that would be that 21 inches. Yeah. So what I would like to do, which makes sense, is have them redo that so it kind of represents. Yeah. 
I'm doing my low budget best version to try to give you a feel for what it all is so it doesn't put it all together, but we'll ask them to fix that so it looks like what they're proposing so you get a better idea. Thanks, Rich. Thank you. Great. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. That's good. That's good progress. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yep. So people casting are going to be off the bridge only, right? Because the other part is going to be private property, correct? I didn't hear what you I'm what sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. So if someone's casting a line, it's going to be off the bridge because the rest of it's going to be going to be private property, correct? No. You would, you're would. you not going to be able to cast a line off of the inlets now anymore because that's going to be private property. Correct? Isn't it private property now? Yes, but people... Okay. Right. So and you're saying people are just going to go and do whatever they want. Right. What, what, yeah, what's changing? What, about what's other changing? Than the, re the residents who move there might say, don't go there because it's private property. So it's going to be different. It, w it would be different because Again, there's going to be people it's living it's there. It's private property today. Is this th right, but there's no one living there, so no one's stopping anyone from doing that. So it is a difference, correct? It's going to be a... It's going to be governed by the people that live there, correct? Again, that's... Up to, I don't know what it's the governance it, is. Uh, nothing's changing. It's private property. Whoever owns it okay. dictates it. The land on the left is ours, isn't it? Yeah, no, I think... I think, I think I think where you just pointed the last spot, I think that's yeah. private. No. Yeah. I think that's it private is. property, right? Yeah. It is. So the question I have, though, is regardless of that, people are going to be casting pretty much exclusively off the bridge, correct? Yeah, I can't, we can't answer that. How, how would we know? So people are going to be casting off the bridge either way. That's the intention. If is they that want to. correct? Right. So I guess yeah. I'm concerned about how careful people are casting off the bridge if it's going to be a pedestrian walkway. Are they doing it today? It's yeah. not done the same way. It's completely different. Because now it's not a sidewalk. You're not limited. You can walk on the other side. There's no real limitations now because of the way it's set up. It's yeah, very but different. I'm, but, I'm, but my question was, so now there's no sidewalk. So now the people are just casting from the roadway. Yes, of course. Right. I so you, you can the cross the street. If they're Wouldn't casting you think in it's a way that you feel cast from a sidewalk than it would from the roadway? I'm sorry, Especially what was with that? a narrow road? I couldn't hear you. I said, wouldn't you think that it was safer casting from a sidewalk than it would be from the road? I'm not concerned about the fishermen. I'm concerned about the pedestrians walking by that might be caught by the person casting their line. So maybe to kind of answer your question, so the bridge is here. Mm -hmm. That's where the railing will, and then head that way. So prior to the bridge, it's a sidewalk. So... Are they going walking down to the edge of the water to cast now on this side? So they will Mostly be able off the bridge. So they will be able to do that afterwards. The railing is for the bridge portion and then the causeway. There's no railing this way. It's just a sidewalk that you walk the sidewalk will come up and meet up with the bridge. You'll get a railing at the bridge heading heading this way. But prior to there'll just be a sidewalk you can walk. Are so there's going to be no... You can... Huh? I'm, s I'm very... If you could re-explain that. I just want to make sure okay. I understand what you're saying. So the bridge is right here. Yeah. So from this point forward, it's a sidewalk out to Park Street. Mm -hmm. So if you're walking along here, you can walk and go right down by the shore over there and cast. You do They do that. Is that what they're doing today? Yes. Okay. So then afterwards... Fast forward, project's done, still be able to do that. The project doesn't interfere with somebody's ability to do that. Um, and again, I think the thing is, if you're casting, you know, you, you, accidents do happen, but I mean, you gotta know what you're casting, right? I mean, I go fishing with my son, I mean, Catches your ear. Old, you gotta pay attention when you're, no. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a <coughs> Thanks for thinking. You need a graphic. Uh, an anima. Okay. I have a question. It's on. Hi, my name is Josephine. I live on Seacong Street, but I've been kind of, you know, very interested in what's going on with the town. 
I had a question that relates to what um, that woman asked. Um, um, is that private property now, or is that going? Is that a proposed lot for a house? Is that going to be a proposed lot for a house? She's asking where they're casting now, and they're walking to the bank. It, um, is no, that is that private no property now? There's no proposals for houses on that side of the pond. Okay, so is it is it someone's property now? Is it the builder's property? It's not the, the builder's got it under agreement, but he doesn't own it. So okay. it's, it's part of the man Buckley and man property, is my understanding. Okay, so is there a proposed lot around there or no, like for a house? No, no. Where you were just pointing, where people fish. There's no proposed lot over there. The so. lots are all down. Okay. okay. So on this side over here. Yes. Yes, yeah, because it, I mean, just saying, like it could create havoc for somebody, you know, living there. They're used no. to fishing. Yeah, there's no proposals there. for no, any no con construction over there. Here. Okay. Okay. I have one last question about um, the sidewalks. You said they were treks. You were going to try to get um, what? What were you going to make the walkway out of? So, oh, sorry. Let me go back. Yeah. I mean, is Actually, it, you know, you is know, it the going decking? is it going to be like a concrete with treks on top, or is it going to be treks that you can like look between the? Two yeah, there'll be spacers there because see the so there is see there, the water. There'll be a little bit, not a huge space, but there will be a little bit of space because they want to let the water go through. They also environmentally don't want to have it covered over yeah. the conservation commission, so there it'll there'll be a little bit of space between there, but not. Not a lot. Would you be able to ride a bike on that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. yes. Talking about like yeah. okay. talking about like a quarter of an inch or three eighths yeah, of an I mean inch. It's or not, not, not <coughs> yeah, not a huge gap. It's I think if uh, you know, that's another thing we probably could ask the engineer to provide uh, you know, just a sample, maybe two foot wide, just how they're gonna space them out so you can visually just see. Well, they're going, at least in your drawing there, they're going across. So you know, a bike would be going across the... Yeah, right. the bike would be going across. Yeah, exactly. I think you were just asking about the space between the deck, uh, the, the, the treads. But I've also heard about treks, and I know someone who has a trek in their backyard, and it kind of, the, the sun warps it. <laughs> it makes me nervous that it's treks, but uh, maybe it's an industrial strength treks that you're talking about. Yeah, this was... Uh, High grade stuff it, 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 that you would not, you wouldn't be buying this at Home Depot or, no, or but, Lowe's. But who's in charge of it if something goes wrong? Is that owned by the town or would that be the developer? No, it would be the town. It's town. Be the town, yeah. Okay. Just, just to, to let you know, we did ask the question about it being continuous, like concrete, but they had said that they wanted the water to go through environmentally. Because it's can you know it's out over the pond, so they want a lot. So that was was discussed. Yep. Uh, just one question. Uh, that you answered that in, it's it's the town's sidewalk. In the winter time, with the town, because you know people, I don't know, I don't think the town well in in uh, Norfolk, but clearing sidewalks so people can maneuver because it's a town sidewalk. Would the town be clearing it so then people wouldn't be walking in the street then? To get that, because some people do fish in the wintertime, believe it or not. God bless them. They do that, and they, then they, you know, they go down there to go out, and they do skate on the pond. It does freeze. Would the town be then clearing it so that people wouldn't be walking into that street during that time? Because, I mean, it's a long construction phase, things of that nature, so that you don't get a snowstorm. No, okay. I, I, I didn't know if you could do it or not. I, I, that's why I was just curious. I just didn't want to. That's why I was worrying about the material. So that's why. He's the. <coughs> we did. Yeah.
Here? Yes. Yes. Yeah, well, there's no. And that's no, no that's that would be yeah I don't, that's not the bridge part. I mean that's the ZBA and, and the developer where he's putting his bus stops or and he's talking schools. about bus stops in the schools. Is there yeah. a I assume they are. What's that? Well, yeah, it's not because it's not purview. It's not pertinent to what we're talking about here. Is the bridge? We've had discussions with Gatra about possibly putting a location there, but. It'll depend on the build-out schedule, and, and that'll be a future. Uh, there won't be a parking lot like for people to park their car and leave it for the day. Um, but some place on Lawrence Street, as there are other places in town, there may be a stop that Gatra makes. Uh, there's a fixed bus route going through town now. We may add a stop in that area to try and minimize the traffic going into the center of town. I will say this, as far as the bus service goes, the Gatra, the regional, you see, they don't, there's going to be a couple of weeks, but generally speaking, they're not, it's kind of a flag. They wouldn't put a physical stop there that you would, right. you, know, you, you flag the bus as you go along, as they do now in town. Um, Other questions? Thank you, everyone. Be back in 23rd, in two weeks. Great to meet you. All right. What do we want to do next, Jack? Do you want to do? Huh? Oh, sorry. Uh, what is what down the agenda? You want to do the what? Warrants? Yeah. Give report the of the warrants. warrants. Yep. Uh, I'm moved to approve the signing of the following warrants: December 12th. Do I need to read all those numbers? No, I would just read the dates. December 12th, uh, January 19th, January 23rd, and January 30th. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Nope. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Rich. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Yeah, thank Thanks, you, Bob. Um, action items. We have a request from the Zoning Board of Appeals to appoint Medora Champagne as an associate member. Okay. Do we have a motion for that? So moved and thank you. Uh, second and thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Please come to the town clerk to get uh, sworn in. Yeah, we'll have to send her a... Yep. An appointment. Nice. Um, we have, uh, you saw this in your, a couple weeks ago, a request from Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Kane, a uh, request for um, yes. naming the street, and uh, Ch Chief Stone looked at it, and he said Norway Farms Drive was his recommendation. He, you know, they kind of look at from a dispatch point of view and other names in town. Um, so his recommendation would be Norwood, Norway, Norway Farms, all of them, drive. Drive. Okay, when, when yeah, they're all, it, it's just yeah. one okay. loop. Do I have a motion for that? So moved, Norway okay. Farms Drive. Second. All those in favor of naming the street Norway Farms Drive, please say aye. 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 Thank you, Chief Stone. Uh, we do have a submission from the Energy Committee for the, uh, Norfolk Energy Committee for their mission statement and their charter, not a charter for the town, but the charter for the Energy Committee. That uh, they wanted to share with you. We need to. We don't need to vote on that, do we? No, I think that would be up to them to vote it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, think I think it's great. If you wanted to provide any feedback, I just thank them for their hard work. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Uh, we have a request from young Mr. Ziegler, um, who's now coordinating the farmers market, um, and he is requesting that they actually move to Saturdays this year. Um, Dates of June second to October sixth, uh, and it'll be from ten to two. And what happened to that young lady? Was running right before? Has she moved on, or is she? Um, I I don't know. Um, I I, can, I haven't talked. No, it doesn't to matter. Them. I mean, yeah. as as I think I think I know people liked it. I, you know. Yeah. The, if I'm sure she 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 has her own farm, so she'll probably hopefully she'll uh, still participate. The vendors and customers. If Katie, Katie, give the Riley. customers what they yeah. want. I guess. Yeah. Motion to approve that. So moved. Second. Any, any discussion? Jack, that's not an issue. Uh, we right? we just checked with Rec and the police and DPW. They were all okay with it. So. That's great. Yeah, I think it's terrific. No, I think it's good for you. Yeah, really uh, nice. nice. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, it'll be nice. And, and Fridays, I think they did pretty well. But they I did, but it made us so sad. Better on Saturday. Yeah. Sad. And I remember she said that it was hard because it would compete with like a Franklin or other towns. So it was yeah. hard. when she told us it was harder to get vendors. I mean, that's why they kicked her out. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh -huh. yeah. Then we have a request from the Norfolk Public Schools. Um, they have a... You missed the Lions first, if he's going down in order, Jack, by the way. 
I, I, lines are a pain. Field I'm places sorry. is a horrible um, thing. <laughs> are you saying that because you're a lion? I'm a lion. Yeah. Yes, I know why you're saying uh, it. Please but. consider the request of the Norfolk Lions to hold their annual Field of Flags from May 20th to June 2nd. And, Absolutely. Uh, hmm. I, I rescind my so comments. Uh, so moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. For those of you at home that have not seen this, oh, amazing. Yeah. come on down and see it when it's there. It's really yeah, there very a, moving. Uh, there's a cool picture on the website of the yeah. of the last time they did it. Yeah. It's phenomenal. Yeah. So I did talk to the DPW, and they're going to try and mow it the day before. And you know, they're little, they weren't they, they they love the idea, but they're you know they they like to mow a little more frequently. But this will <laughs> they'll keep them on the toes. Uh, we do have requests from the Norfolk Public Schools for. Uh, from Superintendent Alardi, authorizing her to submit to the MSBA the Statement of Interest form for the HL Day School roof. So moved. Second. Oh, any questions, comments? Just, just a yeah. quick thing. Are they now down to 20 years? This time? Yeah, I think they'll, they'll, they're hoping that we believe that will be included in the funding this year. But it's never a guarantee. Uh, okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, so that's it. And then we had, uh, um, we did Lawrence Street. So social services, I think Mr. Yeah, I, I, I put that on only because um, uh, we had a situation where some folks showed up in town. We've had it a couple of instances where, where folks have been homeless in the community. And we were all searching for where do you go? <laughs> you know, what do you do? What's available? And I don't know that we can discuss it any further, but I know that the housing authority and some other the police and some other folks in the churches are now kind of working on that to create some type of network for, for folks that may be in dire situations that we can provide them at least some direction social services it's a broad term but um, uh, it's, you know, smaller towns are now starting to experience this and um, we don't have any of those services, if you will, other than indirectly. Right. I know the police help with the one yeah, family. It was exactly. wonderful. And so we the were community rally, actually, with uh, the There's Mara a group stuff. gathering. I was just, just wanted mm -hmm. to share with you, there's a group gathering of, that hopefully can come up with some beginnings of a strategy and how we might be able to more formally deal with that to help, to help folks. So, I mean, these are all different circumstances, right? Oh, yeah. It could be anything. I mean, we, there we may had be no connection to the town. They just, uh, or there could be a connection, no connection to the connection. town. Just, uh, there, was, there was one situation where someone just showed up in a church. It was homeless. Yeah, yeah. Arrived on the train. And, uh, <laughs> um, and, and, you know, the church didn't know where to direct them or what to do. And, and a lot of people got together and ended up helping her and making things work. But it would be nice if we came up with a little bit more. So yeah. there are folks working on it. I just, just yeah. to inform you that yeah, it's, it's one of those out of sight, out of mind kinds of things until it happens. So that's all. Um, public safety, the uh, public safety building project continues. Uh, we did have a site meeting today, and uh, you know, I, I, I think I vent sometimes to you guys about this project. It has probably been the most frustrating project uh, that we've had going back to the library and the school and the uh, King Philip projects. We weren't, I wasn't involved in on a day to day basis, but uh, um, but we're making progress. The uh, I did walk up on the second floor today. They've poured the second floor. Um, got the stairways in. Um, it's getting it's getting better. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah. The stairways were. I went up there today too, and I was very happy to see that stairway. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, we've got a we've got you know we we still have a I think we've talked a little bit about it, but we still have a a challenge from the contractor about the roof. Um, there. Uh, the requirements on the roof, the general contractor and the architect um, disagree. Um, at this point, the two of them are trying; they're they're trying to work on a solution, and that will um, allow us to, to keep going and uh, not have any significant changes. Um, we have put them on uh, both on notice that uh, if they can't come to a solution that's uh, reasonable, that will will we are interested in mediating, um, going through a mediation process and. Figuring out what the right answer would be, um, Mr. DeLuca has already set that up, but we've again put it on hold while they while they try and negotiate. Um, so it's it's still going. We've put the fire department um, kind of on um, 
as was intended anyway, but, but we just kind of reinforced the fact that we don't want to go forward at all uh, with the fire department planning until we get a little f further down the road with the police station. Um, just uh, just to be cautious about, uh, you know, so we have more more clarity about where we are and, and what the uh, contingency will be left at the end of this project. Uh, we've got separate contingencies on the two, and we're still, um, we've still been able to separate those two, but, uh, you know, it's, as I said, it's been a frustrating project, but uh, we are making progress. Um, some guys on our, our team, uh, Matt Hafner and Bob Bullock in particular, Bob through his, you know, inspectional process, but Matt through his facilities management has been spending, you know, a tremendous amount of time working on this project and uh, trying to keep it moving, and they've, 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 they've done a great job. Um, uh, so the King Phillip superintendent search, I know this was actually Jim's too. I did uh, have the opportunity today to meet with uh, one of the candidates. Uh, they've, they've narrowed it down to three, um, the search committee, and... Uh, I don't know if they've been interviewed. I don't think they've been interviewed by the the school committee yet. Yeah. Um, um, the, so the town administrators, they, the school committee asked the town administrators to come and just meet. Uh, I, I got that email too. I, th I thought it was a public thing. Well, I think they're. I think they have different groups of people. They they have administrators from the schools. I, I think they do have some people from the public. I don't know if they reached out to you guys. On the KP uh, distribution. Uh, yeah. School. Um, so I think today was one of the gentlemen was in, and then the next two candidates are this Thursday and then next Tuesday. So uh, for what it's worth, I'll at least get a chance to meet them before <laughs> to work with one. Of them. The one today I thought was was somebody that we could we talked a lot about budget. Um, so it was uh, it was a good discussion, and uh, look forward to meeting the other two. So I don't know if Jim, I, I stole your no, you, you did your topic. No. We do have the meeting coming up on February thirteenth. Which is the uh, you know that working group with the, all the towns the non non quorum working group the, the next meeting is the thirteenth where their school is going to share their preliminary budget with us so yeah. we'll know more then yeah. and also around that too I get a call you know from uh, the, I mean the, how they have the, the parent working groups too there the, she was new to me I didn't know Julie anything about Julie she, Reddick, Julie Reddick, yeah, Reddick she reached out you, to yeah. probably all of us yeah. about the superintendency union so right. I mean that's something they want us you know consider and endorse I know um, that, that group did present that to yeah. the school committee the other night okay that concept um, sounds like Larry opened some eyes in terms of that the only town it doesn't have well, it's union. been it's been a topic of conversation for a long time <laughs> I mean um, but it, it heated up last year uh, Larry certainly did um, the, the, oh, why am I bring Jerry's also I think brought it up oh Jerry McGovern yeah um, the parents have brought it up. Uh, it's it's come up a number oh, of times. Oh, you're Larry from Plainville, not Larry Azer, the building. The yeah. Um, yeah it, it's it, unfortunately the school committee, at least at this point, has not allowed it to get on the agenda as a formal discussion item. Um, and it's interesting. It was a, I don't know, a, a add in a little bit here because we had a discussion. So today we ended up having the town administrators and then three of the administrative staff. Um, special ed folks mostly uh, and the IT person from KP sitting in on this this session with the candidate and uh, the, the we let the we let the superintendent ask a lot of questions uh, for the second half and uh, we, we ended up getting into this discussion about this a superintendent you know the, the district itself the, the structure of the district and how we're you know according to dr. Gilson who's the principal was there we're the only district they with this structure, and uh, with has it like yeah, only yeah. one. And so we talked about you know she said well I think during her tenure we've we've looked at the structure five times and, and keep coming back to the same solution and you know we talked about the process was the process right and who was doing the process and you know, I'm sure Jim would be happy to chime in on that a whole bunch but um, we talked about you know it, it to me it seems like we're actually getting to the point where. All right. Let's not let's not start the discussion and talk about the number of superintendents in the KP district, including the elementaries and the and the KP. Let's talk about um, ed educational, you know, 
advantages for having all three school districts feeding up into the and let's talk about you know special special ed right. challenges and, and have how they all feed up into the KP and because that's what the the administrative staff was talking about those differences and how frustrating it is for them right. um, so maybe if we you know kind of like we did with the regional the Metacomet dispatch center instead of talking about you know the, the number one goal is not to save money um, Hopefully, and do right by the education. So, yeah, right. We sh we should have the right structure. Um, hundred percent right. Hundred percent right, Jack. And then and, and hopefully it's going to save money, or at least it's not going to be right. you know. But even even if you don't, it, it has it, the right you know, it can't I be mean, cost prohibitive. But but yeah. Yeah, I mean, even if you don't, you're you're hundred percent right. It's been approached the wrong way. I mean, you have what if you have one person coordinating all of the curriculums for all of the schools. And that has been an issue. They've tried informally, you know, to get together and do that. But I, I think you'd, I think Ingrid would agree that there have you been have advantages. But yeah. You, yeah, you can't force the process, you know. And um, you know, budgets would become a, a much more realistic way of looking at it. But a special ed is the one that just flies right off the top of the yeah. screen. As as it is, it is a very Curriculum. difficult scenario, and it's critical. And yeah. It should be looked at. It really, really should be looked at. But looked at the right way. Mm. Regionalization doesn't always save money, but it mm. does create redundancies and addition, additional capacities that, that are beneficial. Yeah, it sounds like there's, we're, you know, we collectively, the whole, you know, the, the admin teams, the different towns are all now circling more around that there are, there are more structural areas or more process areas that we can make improvements in mm -hmm. um, absolutely I, I mean I don't know how you guys feel yeah, I, mean, I, 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 I mean again it is it is like what we did with Medicom it was you know it was to get efficiencies redundancies backups mm -hmm. and in this case for schools just a more cohesive just a you know, it's all about the kids and obviously like you said bringing yeah, it's hard already I, I, I can't you know it's hard if you see it in sports when they don't they start to meet each other in seventh grade I can imagine the challenges and when it comes to education special education right regular education it's just too much yeah, yeah. I, one of the things that, that I don't I don't know what how does one go about making that happen is that a vote of the three towns or is that exclusively the vote of the school committee I mean you've got four entities here <coughs> independent entities my gut answer is that it's a, it's a modification to the regional school district now agreement would that, now would that wouldn't that be a vote of the towns yeah. so so and, and I don't mean to make this a power kind of thing, but I'm, I'm talking about process. So, so the process then, w if that's the case, would be that, that um, this board then could play a, a critical role in helping facilitate that. Yeah. Can we get an answer, or, or is it? Uh, I, Julie didn't. I, you know, I didn't recall if Julie mentioned that to me or not. You know, like I said, that's kind of a critical p question to answer first, because then, like you said, we can help. You know, we, yeah. can, we can always help anyway. I mean, obviously. If it's not with the towns, obviously, then I assume it's with the school community. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't thing. know the answer. Yeah. I, I was thinking about that. It's, it's well, I know our, not Dave himself, but I know our attorneys have been school counsel for a long time for yeah. a lot of school districts, yeah. so they could probably. Including ours. Yeah. I'm sure they probably can answer the question pretty quickly. Could we find those, that out? I mean, are those the options, either continue on as we do or go to, you know, the other extreme, which is, you know, the full, complete regionalization? Um, you know, because, you know, when I first heard about the concept of the superintendency union, I didn't necessarily equate that to, you know, regionalization of the, the you know, the K through 6. It's not. You're right. It's different. It, they're, it's they're, they're different models. It's a different model. You, you, you would still have independent elementary schools. You would have a, a centralized administration process to coordinate issues such as special ed. You still have different contracts in all three of the districts. You still have different benefits. Uh, I mean, it, the, the school would, would, if Ingrid were to remain here in charge of this school, for example, the budgeting process would then be coordinated through a, another superintendent who is in charge of all three of the schools. And, and it would provide a much greater coordination, especially for special ed. And it also includes and curriculum, I think, is what in Jess curriculum, question, right? And they would work on curriculum and things of that nature. So they, they would coordinate the schools, but this school would still be under the town of Norfolk. You're not merging the three towns into one centralized regional school system. The town would still control its own schools. So in terms of this board, it's, you know, that, uh, that finite 
number of resources that are going to have that influence across multiple towns. You know, it's, I mean, so basically you have the KP regional employees, right, teachers and staff, mm -hmm. and then you have the town of Norfolk and the other KP um, yep. towns. And then you have, I, I don't know <coughs> how many resources in that department. Is that like a department that we're talking about that is going to <coughs> integrate the activities of the different towns? I'm just trying to understand how it's how it all works. I, I, I don't I don't think there's an easy answer. So, so my feeling is, if we were going to go through a process of or a structure evaluation here, we'd want to look at a, probably several different options. And, you know, one is the is the uh, you know the sharing of a superintendent or you know the structuring that Jim was talking about. You know, we'd also in that analysis we'd probably also want to compare just making it a King Philip district and seeing what that change because there's. You know the budgeting. You know, you got you got where we are today, which is a really convoluted budget, I think. To if we go King Philip K through 12, it gets much simpler. But you still got the th you still got the three towns with different minimum local contribution requirements and stuff like that. So you you know there, there's a I think I just my point is I think we just got to look at a couple. There's probably somebody that can come in and help us look at a couple different structures. And we can also get feedback from the town because, like I said, we're the only town that doesn't do this yeah. one way. It doesn't mean it's the right way or wrong way, right? But, but I, mean, I know when we looked at this back in the 90s, I think it was the 90s, th oh. there was a pretty deep analysis done about, about these different types of options. And the superintendent's union is, is in many regards, a first step of that process. Mm. When you, you're looking at regionalizing the whole system, now you're, it becomes far more convoluted. You, you have different contracts in all three towns. You have different benefit packages. The very same thing you right, do right. with the regional dispatch. Yeah. Uh, different teachers' contracts. Um, you have different building considerations where you have debt on different buildings. You know, so it, it is a far deeper, more difficult conversation to have, whereas a superintendent's yep. union is, is – where that one's really down in the in the in the nitty gritty that takes a lot of work to figure out. I mean, four <coughs> years to figure out the, the regional dispatch. And I'm not sure it would have the support, the same I'm support not as the I, I mean, you know, I, union would. So, yeah, but the so. superintendent's union is is up here. Yeah, you know, it's a it's a high level administrative <coughs> structuring so that you get coordination around curriculum and special ed among other things. And and there are some advantages to that without getting into the level of detail that that other one would require. Yeah, fair enough. <coughs> we'll hear more on that, I'm sure. Uh, we have two minutes to accept. Do I get a... Uh, oh, what? No, what did you say about the minutes? Um, just one set. The second set isn't quite complete. So which one are we... Uh, the top one, but Jeff, I had sent yeah. them to you. So I, they were very brief. They're from the Heinz oh, that, the Auditorium 19th. meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, I actually did not have a chance to look okay, at it. Okay, so we'll, we'll just do it next time. So no. We'll um, yep. Do I have a motion? Oh, well, Further business planning discussions? Nothing? Hearing none, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Good evening, folks. Thank you for listening in. We'll be back here on Tuesday. Jack, help me out here. 23rd, I think. But that's, not, that's not a Tuesday, though. No. I, I can't see that far. It's either the 20th or the 27th. It's Tuesday. 20th. It's 27th. 20th. Oh, I think it's the 27th, because I think the 20th was vac school vacation week. Right. right? Yes, 27th. Uh, yes, thanks. Sorry about that, right. folks. The 27th. 27th. Right. Thank you. Yes. Right. Good evening. Thank you. Be safe.